Japan, Edward, uh, heads of institutions, professors, researchers, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the RGC Symposium. In fact, Ben re reminded me that the last symposium was one and a half year ago in City U, uh, when we uh, shared with you the RGC Phase One review. It seems like ages ago. This I remember of the event. The only thing I remember of the event was Ben fell afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he, he fell and went into hospital. Um, that was one and a half year ago. Have you fully recovered, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, but so much has happened over the last one and a half year. And at least I'm glad that when we're doing an RGC phase one review, we're just the beginning of a road uh, to try to improve our ecosystem, the research ecosystem, and also to try to get more funding. But at that time, the road ahead seemed so far and dim and dark. It's difficult to say what was going to be outcome. But I'm very happy to share with you some very good news. Uh, I'm afraid there hasn't been much good news in Hong Kong these days. I won't need to say any more. Uh, but at least for the research side, there's a lot of positive news. Um, now, back in 2017, I think probably shortly after our RGC phase one review, the chief executive requested Professor Choi Lap Ji, he is here, uh, to conduct a consultation study on the review of research funding and policy. Uh, that was back in end of 2017. And I think in the, around the middle of last year, 2018, he issued his report uh, with seven recommendations, as I recall. And we were very pleased, in fact, the chief executive in her last year's policy address accepted all the recommendations. And the one which is the most important, which I think the result was a surprise to me, was the chief executive proposed an injection of 20 billion into the Research Endowment Trust Fund. And when we went to see her originally, we didn't ask for 20 billion. Uh, I was asked, I, I in fact, I went with the eight university president, how much are you looking for? And I very said 10 billion. Uh, I was actually a bit nervous. <laughs> I didn't know how much to say. And I thought 10 billion was the, I hope for money, if I get 10 billion, I'll be very, very happy. I'll settle for 5 billion, actually. Uh, the reason why we ask for more money, because, uh, as you know, at present, uh, the endowment fund got 23 billion. It's placed with the monetary authority, with the exchange fund, and we earn an annual return over the six years average return. And that's where we get our research, annual research funding for RGC4. And when it was first placed, the return was about 6%. And so we got about 1.2 billion a year. And that's where the research funding for RGC comes from, where in fact most of you get your research funding from, about 1.2 billion. But in 2017, that return went down to just under 3%. So 3% on 23 billion, you can imagine it's 600 million. So in fact, we were 50% short of our budgeted research funding for the previous years. So really we have to do something and that's when we went to the chief executive to say, hey, you've got to help us, you've got to inject more fund because otherwise we have to cut research funding by half. In fact, for 2017 and 2018, we've been using our accumulator surplus. Because in the previous years, luckily we have some surplus, but those surplus were actually run out by, by the end of this year, we've all run out. And so her 20 billion was actually a real surprise because we only need about 10 billion to make up that shortfall in the funding gap. So the other 10 billion are all uh, additional money. Um, as you know, and again we're talking, that the research sector was very, very lucky. Uh, of the Legal Finance Committee recently, that was the only one item that was approved, which was on the 28th of June. In fact, it was the second item. In fact, the first item uh, was on an issue which was discussed before, and the government actually put the research funding request as the second item. And uh, I understand we spent two hours debate, and we got, that was the last item that got approval. So the 20 billion was approved, and hopefully uh, it will be placed anytime soon, and we'll get the return in a year's time. Uh, the UGC and RGC has been working hard, and we have gone through different rounds of discussion, internal discussion, and we have agreed a budgetary proposal now as to how to allocate that 20 billion 
Uh, but really, the main thrust of the 20 billion, apart from, as I say, topping up the shortfall in the past, uh, is to increase the funding for the general research fund and also for earlier career scheme, which affect, I think, most of you here. That, the research for that will be significantly enhanced going forward out of this additional injection. Also, there was a lot of requests for more equipment funding. We're going to increase again a lot the equipment funding research grant. It will also provide additional funding for a collaboration among the universities. I think those are the main, in fact, recommendation in Professor Choi's report, and that is in the proposal, and we are going to put that to work. But obviously, the money hasn't come in yet, but in the meantime, the RGC has agreed that to show uh, goodwill, I know all of you are waiting for the money, that we are going to use out of our remaining surplus to increase a bit uh, the research funding now immediately. And then hopefully in one year's time, when the additional return comes in, we'll then apply the full money for all the different uh, additional budget proposals we've agreed. Now, the other thing that has been done over the last few months is that we we'll also finalized the operation guide for the three new RGC fellowship schemes. I don't know if you heard of it. It's a postdoctoral fellowship scheme, the RGC research fellow scheme, and the RGC senior research fellow scheme. And also, we we'll also finalized operation guide for the research matching grant scheme. Now, uh, after consulting all the academics, so the operation guide and the way this proposed to be used has been arrived at after quite detailed consultation. Now, uh, the funding for the three fellowship scheme already has already been secured, and the nomination for the first round we call in August and September, so wait for the news. This free fellowship scheme is aimed to provide obviously more support and recognition to research staff force and also to help the university to recruit more talent in the research field. This will be run on an annual basis. Uh, I think Ben will share with you a bit more of the details of how this would work. And as for the research matching grant scheme, this is uh, the first time there's a matching grant scheme for research only. Again, this was approved in the 28th June National Finance Committee meeting. Uh, the scheme will be launched on 1st of August this year. And again, we believe that this will attract, hopefully, additional funding, especially from the industries. Because I think in the past, what we heard is that whilst industries uh, and, and obviously a lot of uh, very generous donors in Hong Kong, they're happy to donate money to buildings, to classrooms, but they don't seem to wish to donate to us research. That's what this is for. This is specifically to match donation for research funding. In fact, I know uh, quite a lot of research uh, uh, or donation has been already promised as a result of this research matching grant scheme. So that is going to be rolled out. In addition, there's a lot of other work. Uh, we have completed the RGC phase one review, which I mentioned uh, before, earlier, and after one and a half year, I think we have implemented all the recommendations. We are now in the phase two of the RGC review, which is on more macro issues, how to make uh, uh, our research funding application more efficient, and Ben again will share with you uh, more in detail. Uh, the other thing we are embarking on is the R portion. Now that affects the university most of all, and when we did RGC phase one review, uh, the recommendation of the consultants is something we have to look at because the R portion has resulted in some behavior which we don't want to see. I think it suppressed perhaps uh, the length of research because a lot of pressure is put on researchers to make sure they get uh, approval for uh, the research application because uh, that affects the R portion review and that in turn affects the promotion prospect. And that is a soft outcome maybe we don't quite want, and therefore it is recommended that we'll do our portion review. In fact, we've already formed an expert group and the work has just started, so you'll hear more about it in the future. So on that note, uh, a lot is happening. Ben is gonna share with you more details and then there'll be a question and answer session. In the meantime, I wish you good luck. Uh, good luck with your research, and I hope you enjoy this symposium. Thank you very much.